Web applications wouldn't be all that useful without a good user interface. Thankfully, Angular gives us some really good tools to help with building user interfaces, and we're going to see how to use them in this lecture. Okay, so far the application is set up to display some data, but it doesn't really do a whole lot yet. We don't have any kind of user interaction set up, and that's what we really want to get to in an application. So in this lecture, we're going to see how we can use some of Angular's features to make a user interface. And to do that, we're going to see some of Angular's built-in directives for user interfaces. We're going to take a look at ng-click, ng-show, and ng-hide, and then also ng-model, which will allow us to do two-way data binding. Before we get started with that though, we should probably take a look at how each of these directives works in principle. So as the first example, why don't we take a look at how we can use ng-click. So let's say we had a button and we wanted it to display a message in the console whenever the user clicks it. So we can call this button say hello, and then we will put an ng-click directive on this button and we will reference a method called say hello. And so this method is going to come from our controller and we'll set that up next. Let's go over here to the controller and we have to put this on scope. So we'll say scope.say hello is equal to a function. And in that function, we are just going to log to the console the message hello. So we'll save that and let's head over to the browser to check that out. So if I refresh, you can see we've got our button up there. I'm just going to display the console so that we can see what's going on. And if we click the button, you'll see we get the message hello. So what's happening here is this ng click directive is referencing a method in our controller. And when the button is clicked, that method will be called. And once again, we have to put that method on scope for it to be picked up by our controller. Okay, another thing that we can do is put in a message that we want to hide or show conditionally. So let's say this is the secret message. And I'm going to come over here to the H2 and use the directive ng show. And the condition that we'll stipulate here is that we want to show this message when we have a property called show message that is equal to true. So if this show message property, which we've yet to initialize, is equal to true, then this h2 will be shown. So if we save this and over to the browser, check it out, you'll see that nothing shows up. But let's modify our button here, and this will now say show message. And if we modify the ng click directive to say that we want the property show message to be equal, to true. Now again, the equals being different here, this is an assignment to true, and this one is checking whether show message evaluates to true. If we come back over to the browser and check that out, you'll see that we get the secret message showing up right there. Now, what if we want to toggle between showing and hiding the message? So we can do that easily by copying our button, and we can say that on this button we want to hide the message, and in this case, show message should be false. So if we save that and come back over, we'll be able to show the message and then we can also hide the message. So in this case, we have two buttons, one for showing and one for hiding. What if we wanted to simply have one button that toggled between showing and hiding the message? Well, we can do that as well. And in this case, let's take out one of these buttons and we're going to call this toggle message. And what we'll do here is we'll say that show message is equal to the negation of show message. So essentially what we're saying is that whenever this button is clicked, we want to set show message to the opposite of whatever it's currently at. So if show message was currently false, pressing the button would set it to true and vice versa. So let's save that and check it out. We'll toggle the message on and off. And so you can see it works just fine. Okay, so the last one we wanna take a look at is ng model. And so chances are you've seen something like this maybe on the Angular homepage or on some other tutorial. But essentially what we'll do is bind a text element to an input so that whenever the input changes, that text element changes as well. So let's maybe put in an input. We'll leave the type as text and the placeholder can say, leave a message. And then down below, what we'll do is set up an H2 that should display this message. But what do we actually put within the H2? 
Well, what we need to do is reference something from this input element. And how we do that is we have to use ng model to set up the model for the element. So we say ng model is equal to maybe a property like message. And then within the h2, we can use our double curly braces for templating to output that message. So let's save that and check it out. So if we do a message like hello, we see that it's coming through just fine there. Okay, so that's about all we need to do to take a cursory look at some of Angular's directives for user interfaces. Let's get started with actually building out the user interface for our app. Before going too much further though, what I actually want to do is change up the settings for our tab sizes, just because it'll be easier in the long run to see more of the text on the screen if we change it. So over here in settings, I'm gonna say that I want the tab size to be two. And as you'll see, that kind of brings all of the text over to the left a little bit. If we look over here now, our HTML document can be modified a bit. We can just back up all of this stuff so that we get a little bit more spacing. So let's save that and let's come back over here to our data.json file. What I'm going to do is paste in some more data. This is gonna be a kind of modified set of data. We still have our listings, but we have a couple more of them and we have more details on them as well. And so as you'll see here, we've got some details about the bedrooms and the bathrooms and the area. And we've also got an image key that points to an image. And these images are over here. I've already placed them within my images folder. So you can either copy all of this data out yourself. I'll just give you a chance to copy all of it out by pausing. But alternatively, you can follow the link in the description to download this data and all the images that we have over here as well. So with that set up, let's modify the view. The first thing that we'll do here is actually put in a nav bar and we don't really need one for our application but it'll make it look a little bit nicer if we do have one. Next thing we'll do is modify how the listings show up. So I'm going to take out all of that HTML and paste in some new HTML. It's kind of the same but with a few differences which we'll see. As you can see here, we've got a div with a class of container, and then we are putting our ng repeat on a div that has a class of column small four, which will mean that our property listings will show up in kind of a card fashion. Within each, we've got a thumbnail, and then we're pointing an image to our images folder, and then we are templating out the image property of each listing. And as you can see here, we're using another Angular directive. This one's called ng source. And so why do we do that and not just have a source pointing to our image like we normally would? Well, what happens is when the application first loads, if we just have a source like that, then the page is going to actually look for an image that has this title, the curly braces plus whatever's inside of them. And that's obviously not a real image. What we're actually looking for is for when Angular compiles to look for the image that gets templated out with that name. And to do that, ng source delays that from happening until the application is compiled. Then down here within our caption, we've got our typical details that we've had before. So let's check this out in the browser. If we refresh, we are gonna see we get all of our listings showing up just fine. What we should probably do is make it possible for the user to toggle between this data here and the additional data as well. And so let's check out how we can do that. Uh, once again, we're going to change up what we've got in here. So I'll give you a chance to copy it over once you have it. I'm gonna paste in some additional HTML. So what's going on here is we've still got our caption div and we are putting in another div that is going to be conditionally hidden. And the condition for it to be hidden is if this property show details is equal to true. And so where do we pick up that show details property? Well, we've got some buttons set up down here. And as you can see, when we click this button, for instance, that says details, we're toggling the show details property from whatever it is, maybe true to false or false to true, whatever the case may be. And then we've also got an additional button that says close and this ng click is going to do the same thing. So effectively we'll have one button that opens the details panel and one button that closes it. So it's this panel up here that is going to be the first view, the front facing panel. And it's this div down here with a class of details that is going to be the additional detail to be shown when these buttons are clicked. And then we're also just putting out the description of the property as well. You'll see also that we're using ng hide and ng show to conditionally hide and show these buttons. So for an improved user experience, the details button really shouldn't be shown if we're already on the further details panel. 
Likewise, the close button should be shown if this panel is open, but not be shown if it isn't. And so that's a lot to take in, but I'll give you a chance to copy all of this down. And once you're ready, let's go back over to the browser to check it out. Okay, so we've got some icons in our property listings that make the listings look a little bit nicer. And if we click the details button, you can see we've got all of the details showing up. And if we click close, that portion is closed and we're back to where we were. So this is just a really simple way of letting the user toggle between two different panels within a card. And the way that we did that once again is by making use of Angular's ng show and ng hide directives, and then providing some action on these button clicks to hide and show those portions appropriately. Okay, so that's it for this lecture. In the next one, we're going to see how to write custom filters in Angular. And this will give us the ability to have the user select a minimum and maximum price range for their property search. As you've seen, we've already used filters like the currency filter, but those are built in with Angular. We also have the ability to do our own though, and we'll take a look at that next.